Formula One. That involves top speed, strategy and perfect engineering. In Montreal, the brakes in particular are under extreme strain. No matter what the conditions, your brakes have to work perfectly. Drivers have to be able to rely on them absolutely. The Gilles Villeneuve circuit features several full-speed stretches where the drivers work the brakes really hard. Montreal, it's a high-speed track which you get the best lap time on a relatively low level of, of wing because all the corners are very slow. So you're at the advantage you get from using a lot of uh, downforce and therefore a lot of drag at the track is quite small. So we tend to run relatively low drag which means relatively high speeds and the amount of energy that you put into the brakes is proportional to the square of the speed you stop from. So we have very high level of energy to dissipate uh, when we slow down to the slow speed corners and um, so the brakes are worked, worked harder at Montreal than any other track that we go to. The brakes are complex components. To ensure they work perfectly and reliably in Canada too, a meticulous assembly process is essential. The interplay of lots of little parts reacts with extreme sensitivity to pressure on the pedal. Any misjudgment results in a blockage, which in the worst case scenario can scratch into the brake drum. The braking principle works like this. Hydraulic pressure is exerted via the brake pedal onto the brake cylinders, of which there are usually six per caliper. The brake shoes are pressed against the brake discs with around 100 bar, producing up to over a thousand degrees of heat in the process. Cooling is therefore the other technical challenge. You need to get as much cooling air as possible to the discs. Uh, sometimes you can even have uh, problems with glazing in practice because you have so much cooling air there. But when it comes to the race, you need to have all of this cooling to avoid oxidization on the disc. Engineers tinker away on optimum ventilation, in secret of course. The main principle, however, is that air is fed into the system via air ducts and fans. The volume of air, the intake, is recalculated for every race. Since 1982, in order to cope better with the heat, brakes too have been made using carbon. However, it's not the chassis material carbon epoxy, but rather in the case of the brakes, it's called carbon-carbon because it's carbon fibers and they're bond, bound together by a carbon matrix and that is created by what's called carbon vapor deposition within a furnace at about 1200 centigrade. So, and it's quite a long process. It can take maybe 12 weeks in total within this furnace for the whole material to be produced. Brakes, high tech in Formula One. On average, a driver brakes 200 times per race with no ABS and no servo units. Hard work for the driver's foot, which has to press down with up to 100 kilos. More of the Gilles Villeneuve circuit is taken flat out than any other F1 track. For both drivers and materials, braking there is thus exceptionally tough.